Hey, hey, hi, hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. And it's time for another Why You Know Review, where I give my thoughts on the thing that's music. Basically, a bunch of albums that have dropped over the past month or so that I haven't had the, the chance to give a full formal review on. So I'm talking about them gauntlet style here, one after the next. That's what we're doing. So yeah, you know, let's uh, uh, get it done. Ba-bam. Very solid, very good little alt and indie country album over here with some uh, great songwriting and bops here and there. I think the first two tracks, the last two tracks, Hurricane is also a really fire cut. Really good vocal harmonies throughout the LP. Uh, occasionally some very touching and uh, interesting lyrics too, dealing in, of course, love and relationships. The whole thing is very quaint, but uh, here and there we do have a, an emotionally devastating cut too. My problem with the record overall is some tracks do pale in comparison to others, and I found that uh, Instrumentally, it does feel a little one-dimensional across the entire thing. But still, if you're looking for something with a country flair that is tasteful and mostly well-written, give this thing a shot. My notes here for the new Lorna Shore record, which is, uh, you know, surprisingly different than a lot of their past ones, is um, Deathcore, Symphonic Black Metal, and Ear Fatigue. And that's pretty much what I got. New Shy Girl record, Nymph, really been looking forward to this one, uh, but, but it dropped during a week when a ton of records came out. I was only able to catch up with it after the fact, and I was not as crazy about it as I had hoped to be. I mean, there are some good alternative pop and very dark, sexy, sensual dance pop cuts on here that are quite left field and quite odd. But as I listened to the entire album, what kind of struck me as a weak spot on it was that the production really kind of carried most of the time while the vocals came across quite sleepy and maybe not having as much a uh, distinct personality to them as it seemed like they would when I was hearing some of these tracks just as singles. Uh, there are some good and creative cuts on here for sure, and I think there's no reason not to look forward to the next thing that Shy Girl does, and it seems that there's a lot of people taking uh, very positively to this project, uh, and for good reason. But there are just aspects of it that I think could be more bold and stand out, especially on the vocal front, and I uh, will leave it there. Sophomore full-length LP from this Australian singer-songwriter, and uh, definitely quite a bit more mature than the debut she came to the table with in terms of instrumentation, uh, songwriting. But with that being said, I feel like some of the tongue-in-cheek humor and the playful attitude and what made the debut album fun has kind of been lost in the process of changing the vibe a little bit. And I don't know if I'm really all that crazy about it. You know, that, that was really like part of the exciting appeal for Stella Donnelly at least for me off the bat, and that just kind of seems missing now and in favor. While we do have some more, you know, I guess impressive instrumental palettes here and there, uh, the whole thing just seems a bit more drab, I suppose. So yeah, I was a little underwhelmed with this one, unfortunately. Not a bad one from Willow. Not a bad rock record from Willow. And, and I think you could legitimately say that this is probably her best record, period. Even with it being as short as it is, I mean, look, um, there's nothing particularly deep or profound here on the rock front because stylistically, we're really getting like an a la carte buffet style collection of, you know, riffs and pieces and vocal uh, approaches, uh, some of which are more punk, some of which are more alt rock or alt metal or just metal in general, uh, some of which are a little more emo. It's, it's really a mix across the entire thing. There's no one single genre or style or framework that's kind of guiding uh, Willow's creative hand here. It's just like a real mix of everything that's, you know, slightly alternative that you might be able to wear a black leather jacket to. Uh, but with that being said, the production is very good. A lot of the songs are quite good. The guitar work and riffs are pretty well done as well. It's just really well done. Again, it's uh, not super deep as far as any of these styles go. Nothing here is reinventing the wheel, but uh, you know, a much more solid rock record than most uh, in the mainstream who kind of you know here and there decide to dabble in the genre. Uh, like you know, I, I think of um, 
uh, uh, Demi Lovato recently doing something similar in terms of like mixing all these different genres together within you know the rock field, uh, but all of it coming out very generic. Willow, on the other hand, shorter record, but doesn't feel as non-specific. Feels like she's really kind of paying attention to the genres that she's borrowing from, even if she's not putting her own super unique spin on it. In regards to Charlie Puth, I'm just going to say this. If the man is going to spend as much time on the internet and in interviews talking about how horny he is, can he at the very least make music that is sexy? Can he? Quavo and Takeoff come out with their own record over here with Offset not in the picture, only built for Infinity Links, and it's actually kind of good, or at least it's um, surprisingly better than the Culture 3 record that dropped a little while ago. You know, past Culture 1, it kind of seemed like Migos were more and more kind of like phoning it in. The tracks and the structures and the songwriting just felt more wash, rinse, and repeat the further we went down the line. It actually kind of feels like um, Takeoff and Quavo are a little invested in this one in terms of uh, the bars, in terms of the sample choices, in terms of the hooks. It legitimately makes me wonder, like, was Offset just kind of holding things back and wanting to, you know, just kind of like half-ass the process uh, as a means of just like getting the record done because, you know, while I wouldn't say this album is amazing, it seems like Quavo and Takeoff are putting a bit more heart into this project than we got on Culture 3. Uh, of course, you know, there are silly bars and moments and tracks that make you roll your eyes a little bit here and there, but uh, it, does seem, it does seem like there's more effort and detail going into this one uh, than with the last Migos record, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, while I went into this album skeptical as to like, you know, why do we just want to listen to, to two of the Migos, uh, it's, it's actually not too bad. It seems like they, they have a good rapport going and they're actually like invested in the well-being of this project a little bit, and I think that comes out in the quality of it. So, in a weird way, I think the title of this record is kind of a, you know, a knowing wink and nod at uh, the fact that this is a very quantity over quality record for Lewis Cole. And there's quite, um, you know, a, a gap in a lot of things from track to track on the LP, as there are quite a few shorter, more undercut cuts on this thing. Uh, meanwhile, we have very lengthy jams that reach up to seven freaking minutes. Some really experimental cuts here and there as well. I, I'll say this, at the end of the day, I much prefer his record time, and that album had a lot of versatility going for it as well, but like track to track, from front to back, there was more bops to be had overall. I'm not feeling like that's the case on quality over opinion. This record feels so much more unfocused and so much more unprepared uh, in some pretty key moments. Uh, meanwhile, there are some cuts that uh, Lewis Cole has never sounded funnier, or you know his grooves have never sounded tighter, or the instrumental arrangements have never been more impressive. So, you know, again, it, it really is like a mixed bag of weird very forgettable lows and totally exciting and thrilling highs. So <laughs> I don't know, at the end of the day, I guess it kind of washes out into an even record. Uh, yeah. This new mixtape from Baby Tate is truly one for the ladies. It's got a lot of bops. It's got some smooth R&B flavored jams. There's a lot of sex appeal to it too, but without like trying uh, its damnedest to appeal to the guys. There's a lot of stories of like love on the rocks as well, obviously like, you know, reaching out to another girl whose heart is broken and so on and so forth. Like it's a good mix of vibes and styles and sounds that showcase Baby Tate's versatility. So if you're looking for a project that is well produced and well performed and does a little bit of everything, this may be the thing. As cool as some of the cuts on this project are, I found it overall to be just a little too general and spread a bit too thin. With the indie moments, and the lo-fi moments, and the post-punk bits, and the electronic bits. Plus, there were some pretty harsh and deafening distorted mixes on this record as well that I wasn't too crazy about. Look, at the end of the day, the biggest thing working against this project is just its general inconsistency. Hopefully, with whatever Cording is doing from here forward, uh, they kind of decide on something a bit more you know, uh, focused, uh, even if they are still kind of covering all these various genres in the process. New Brian Eno project over here that uh, has quite a few more vocal passages than I was expecting going into it. Uh, these really um, 
dramatic beckoning moans that call out over some very pristine, but maybe sometimes too sanitary beds of uh, ambient tones and drones, many of which are very pretty, but I'm just not enjoying the vocal work much of the time. It, it doesn't come across to me as um, pretty to listen to or calming or interesting. It just feels like uh, some very awkward cultish chanting that I'm not entirely vibing with, honestly. It doesn't put me into the stupor that I think it's like implying that I should be in. And uh, as a result of that, it's just kind of losing me. Even if I do think uh, a lot of the production on this thing is impressive. A lot of the vocals have this very artificial delay on them as well, which I think kind of takes me out of the vibe, but you know. It is what it is. Young Gravy comes through with this new record, and you know I, I think it pretty much confirms that, in my opinion, what Young Gravy does is not a joke, but it is in fact a shtick, and it is like the best shtick anybody has going on in hip hop right now. The personality is great. The voice is deep and booming. The production, I think, is becoming more gravy-esque over <laughs> the years as well. The hooks are there, too. I mean, after a while, the humor of it all does wear a little thin, but there are some wild and crazy beats on this thing. Gravy is constantly charismatic. I think the lack of overall depth does make going through an entire project of stuff like this a little difficult uh, because it does wear thin after a bit. But with that being said, like Young Gravy is very much well deserving of the praise and attention and hype uh, that he's been able to build up until this point. Just by virtue of being able to take this idea that he had of this persona and being able to like ride it out as long and as far as he had. And it seems like at this point there's still Young Gravy gas left in the tank, so why the hell not? Let's keep the gravy train moving. <laughs> This new little Texas record came out a while ago, uh, and I just wanted to come through here and just say because I, I did uh, let it slip through the cracks on me as far as a review goes, but uh, hey, some of the best and most thrilling hardcore, hardcore techno, that you're gonna hear this year is on this goddamn album. It's fun as hell. Yeah, it's kind of deafening listening to it front to back, <laughs> but uh, you know, again, there's some great tracks on here, some fun bangers like incredible BPMs, it's a thrill, it's a rush, it's pure insanity. Uh, maybe a little too extreme for some, but uh, hey, you know what? If, if you're not into it, go listen to fucking something else. Another record from this UK rapper that I'm just having a very difficult time getting into despite all the fandom, despite all the hype, but I just find the content of the lyrics, even with it being as emotional and as personal as it is, to be a little too middle-brow. And on top of it, I just think Loyal's flows and delivery come across a little stiff and low impact on an emotional level. I just don't really kind of get, you know, that, that deep, heart-wrenching impact that I think some people do from his music. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's because the performances are a little off. I feel like they come across a little calculated or just uh, held back or just uh, having a difficult time kind of conveying the full range of emotion that they are dealing with. And um, yeah, furthermore, I'm just not really impressed with a lot of the wordplay, a lot of the storytelling. I just think it's merely okay. You know, I wish it stood out to me in a significant way and surely it is better than a lot of what's out there content-wise. Um, but it just doesn't really move me in a, in a deep way. And that's because I just think it's lacking. It's lacking in a technical sense and in a conceptual sense. <sighs> you know, ever since I loved YG's second full-length LP, I have been just waiting with bated breath for the day that he drops another album that is as good or is in the same ballpark. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's not the case with this one as well. While there are some of his best tracks in years, on this thing, Maniac, I think is great. Some of his worst tracks ever are on this thing. That Baby Mama track is trash, toxic, sucks. A few of the more commercial tracks are horrible. Uh, Sober is mid as hell um, with, uh, you know, freaking Post Malone in the mix. And um, How to Rob a Rapper, I think, is uh, just not really the vibe right now, considering like how many uh, artists we've lost as of late to either robberies or just random killings out of jealousy, clout chasing, so on and so forth. Just, it just, just kind of seems like not, not the one uh, right now. So uh, yeah, this album, this album was not a good one from YG. 
after a pretty hype 2021, dry cleaning returns very quickly with a follow-up uh, stump work over here in 2022. And while this was definitely a very hyped up post-punk band last year, I, I have to say I'm just not really seeing the hype even more on this new record. Not only with a lot of the instrumentals uh, favoring an even blander sound this time around, but the vocal mixing is uh, quite quite bad. It's like ASMR level like intensity in terms of like, yeah, it's quiet, but it's also like right the fuck up in your ear and um, completely drowning out the instrumentals over and over and over and over. And not that I'm really desperate to hear the instrumentals anyway, because they just are so flavorless. Yeah, it's, it's just a very odd kind of balance between the instrumentation and the vocals. And on top of that, I'm um, just not really all that enthralled with what is coming across uh, with these, you know, spoken word bits and passages. Um, songwriting wise, I think a lot of what's going on here is pretty unimpressive too. It's, it's just not hitting. It's just not hitting for me. <laughs> New one from Rome Streets over here. Uh, while he may not be my favorite voice and personality in the, you know, Griselda gauntlet right now, uh, he does certainly have a very grimy record on his hands over here with some decent features and some good production. Uh, a lot of people love those Rome Streets bars. Uh, Content-wise, I don't see what's so exciting about it because it does kind of round a lot of the same bases that we've already heard uh, rounded quite often in the Griselda camp, and that made it a little difficult for me to kind of be hype about this one. But with that being said, for those of you who are way, 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 way into that sound, you can't get fucking enough of it. Uh, this record is probably going to be a must. So give it a spin, give it a listen, and that's all you gotta know. Zishin, have you given any of these albums a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well over here next to my head. It's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano. Why you no review? Forever.